There is no logic in politics, my friends. <clears throat> try as you may, and try as you might. There is no logic to be found in the body politics line of sight. Good evening, everyone, once again. This is Hell's Unicorn reporting to you live from the dark and dank, swampy forests of William Penn. I just got finished watching what I think may be one of the most gratuitous displays of willful ignorance that I have ever had the misfortune to behold. And that is quite an accomplishment considering the doozies that I've seen over the past several years, particularly out of people of the more neoconservative mindset. Basically what I was doing was I was watching uh, a segment from Larry King Live, and it was a three-person roundtable debate between Ron Paul, the man, Ben Stein, and uh, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee, with Larry King moderating. And the primary topic was foreign policy, which is always an issue of contention, particularly when you have a real conservative, a fake conservative, and a fake liberal debating the topic, the real conservative of course, being the libertarian-minded conservative Ron Paul. Ben Stein took it upon himself to, after being backed into a corner and being asked to explain why it is that we have problems with Islamic terrorism, he took it upon himself to throw a classic yet detestable insult at Mr. Paul, basically labeled him as anti-Semitic. Now, bear in mind that Ron Paul did not mention nor even imply that what he was talking about had anything to do with Israel. I mean, I'm sure that in some distant way you can connect the recent situation in Yemen with uh, what's going on between Israel and Palestine, but the truth of the matter is the relationship is distant and tenuous at best. But... Um, Anyway, being someone who myself have been labeled as anti-Semitic any time I've ever criticized anything that Israel's done, I feel for Dr. Paul. I feel for Dr. Paul on just about everything because he constantly has to educate and re-educate people that just don't want to learn or just simply can't learn. But suffice to say, Ben Stein is a big disappointment to me. A big disappointment primarily because I've liked some of the stuff that he's done. I mean, you know, the guy is a well-meaning guy. He's got some good viewpoints on a couple good issues. I have some huge disagreements with him regarding uh, monetary policy and especially regarding foreign policy. In fact, I have a big disagreement with most of the Republican Party on this issue, which is a little bit troublesome because I tend to have more Republican friends than Democrat friends. It's just kind of the way things pan out when you're a supporter of small government. But that leads me to a question that I wanted to throw at all of my mainline conservative and pro-war or otherwise neoconservative uh, subscribers, if there are any of you out there. How do you guys square saying that you're in favor of small government with the fact that you renege on that viewpoint every time the issue of foreign policy comes up. And foreign policy is where we spend, we spend a ton of money on that, and it costs us a ton in, you know, extra spending as a result because we constantly have to pile more money on for intelligence gathering, for shoring up uh, infrastructure abroad, blowing up bridges and then rebuilding them in other countries, and so on. It's a gargantuan waste of money. How do you square all of that with being supporters of small government? And furthermore, a lot of you guys like to carry around pocket constitutions, you show up at the tea parties, which libertarians like me were doing long before you guys got involved in it, and you tote the uh, Gadsden flag. Let me ask you this. How many of you actually support the Patriot Act? And if you, if so, how do you square that, all of that Gadsden flag waving and all of that 
pocket constitution toting with the fact that that bill effectively ended five out of the first ten amendments to the Constitution. Amendments that were put in place precisely to prevent the kind of government that we are now being subjected to. Let's see, let's just go through here. Freedom of speech, freedom of the press, that's basically gone now because of this thing. Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Ninth and Tenth Amendment, there is no state sovereignty anymore. This is why you have such a significant free state movement in New Hampshire right now and in other states because states don't really have any sovereignty anymore, and what little sovereignty they do have is being whittled away every day when crap like what happened on this flight over to Detroit happened. People are so spooked by some lunatic who was probably on several, who was probably heavily medicated, trying to blow himself up by putting a bunch of firecrackers into his underwear. And he was subdued by vigilant passengers. You ask me, we don't need all of this damned spending on all of this ridiculous crap, all this data mining, all of these, this spying on people inside this country. All we need are a few vigilant citizens to kick a little ass when somebody gets out of line on a flight. Problem solved. You know, if you want to put more armed air marshals on the planes, that's fine. But anyway... Now that I'm done throwing a couple of hard questions at you neocons, I'd also like to take a minute to tell you neolibs out there. Some of you might be subscribed to my channel as well. I just wanted to tell all of you right now that I have a little bit, I can understand neoconservatives a little bit better than I can understand you guys. You guys go around saying Iraq war, wrong. Afghan war, wrong. Spying on citizens, wrong. You're with me on all of that stuff. But when push comes to shove, when it's time to actually act on that stuff, you guys are silent. You know, I mean, what good is being right if you're not doing right? And how do you excuse people like Sheila Jackson Lee, who on one hand say Afghanistan and Iraq are obviously causing problems for us abroad, are you know, our credibility, you know, internationally speaking, is going downhill. And yet she says that we need to continue sticking it to the terrorists in the ways that we've been doing, which is basically a complete contradiction in logic. I Personally, I don't think that you guys are capable of logically analyzing politics at all. I don't think neocons are really capable of that either. But, you know, I'm, not, I'm trying not to be too hostile here, but I just, I need you guys to square that with me also. So feel free to leave comments just trying to explain to me why it is that you view this the way you do and why it is that you uh, also occasionally need to throw the term anti-Semite around whenever you get backed into a corner. I mean, this, honestly, I'm tired of hearing the term anti-Semite. All right, it's, it's old, it's played out. Come up with a new insult. Grant me that courtesy at least. Well, anyway, that's my thoughts on this. With prudence to myself and benevolence to all of you, good evening.